What is going on guys? Grave here. Today we got update 1.08 for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I will link these patch notes down in the description below if you'd like to read over them in full detail. I'm going to kind of go over the high points. Let's go ahead and hop right into it. Of course, the cross-gen or the cross-game progress, the battle pass, and the new Season 1 progress has all been added into the game. Of course, that will be starting tomorrow when Season 1 goes live. Of course, we have new Season 1 challenges uh, available tomorrow and operator missions as well. So they added various stability fixes for all platforms and various UI fixes for all platforms. Uh, of course, when it comes to new things we got in the game, uh, when it comes to maps, we have the Pines for 6v6, Raid for 6v6, Nuketown 84 Holiday for 6v6, uh, four new gunfight maps, which are 2v2 maps. Uh, some things they did with some of these maps, of course, when it comes to Nuketown in general, they adjusted the spawns to reduce uh, the chance of getting spawn trapped from long range and of course from mid map. Of course they talked about gunfight that will be available at the start of season one. Also prop hunt will be available at the start of season one. When it comes to hard point additional spawns were added for all hard point zones on crossroad strike. Adjusted spawns for hard point zone two on Moscow and addressed an issue where players could capture a hard point outside of the yellow house on Nuketown 84. When it comes to domination they addressed an issue where zone borders would show as contested before the round started and address an issue where the announcer would incorrectly state an almost one line to the losing team. Uh, free for all players will now join matches already in progress less frequently and when it comes to search and destroy the bomb waypoint will now fade away when in line of sight. When it comes to control overtime defense will now be given the team uh, will now be given to the team that has fewer total deaths and remove several defender spawns that were too close to the A zone on Garrison. Uh, when it comes to fire team Dirty Bomb, they fixed a rare crash in fire team uh, Dirty Bomb that related to the sentry turret and addressed an issue where the fire team spawn overhead HUD effects would be present during best play. Uh, for CDL rules, they did uh, do a few things for it. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. Just kind of let you guys know there were a few changes for the CDL. Uh, when it comes to featured playlists that we will have available starting tomorrow, Raid the Mall, which will be a uh, raid, and of course, uh, the Pines, this will be a 6v6 mosh pit. Gunfight, like I say, which will be a, available at the start of Season 1 along with Prop Hunt. And Nuketown 84 Holiday 24-7. Uh, of course, this is available at the start of Season 1 as well. Another thing most people want to know about is the weapon changes because there were a lot of them today. Of course, starting tomorrow, you will be able to get the MAC-10 at uh, level 15 for free as the free part of the Battle Pass. Along with the Graza, it will be available for free as the free part of the Battle Pass as well in, at Tier 31. Now, when it comes to the weapon changes, the weapons we already have in game, the AK-47 reduced the headshot multiplier and reduced the damage from the 20-inch 20 uh, 20 Spesnaz uh, RPK barrel. Uh, when it comes to the Krig-6, they reduced the headshot multiplier. I'm not sure how good the Krieg is now. I have used it some today. Of course, these, uh, you know, these weapon tuning fixes were alive today. And that was the one thing about the Krieg that made it really good. Uh, the headshot multiplier was nice because, you know, you could get a couple shots to the body, one to the head, and kill pretty quickly. Now that's not the case. So I'm not sure how the Krieg is going to fit into the meta. The FFAR, they increased the damage range. Not quite as good as it was to begin with, but they also reduced the recoil. The FFAR is definitely a gun that you should be using now. The FFAR is definitely back, and it's a lot better than it was after its previous nerf. When it comes to submachine guns, the Milano got an increase in effective damage range, along with the KSP and the Bullfrog. All three of these guns so far have been performing really well in multiplayer. The KSP especially. Uh, I've been using it. If you have the right attachments on it, the KSP can definitely ha have that one burst potential at some crazy ranges now compared to what it did in the past. It's not just extreme range, but it is a lot better, in my opinion, than it was before the buff. When it comes to the attack, uh, attack rifles, they reduce the maximum effective range of the M16 and reduce the fire rate. Uh, when Tactical Rifle Charlie, which of course is the AUG, reduce the headshot multiplier, reduce the maximum effective range, and reduce the fire rate. Reduce damage for, for the 19.8 Task Force Barrel. The interesting thing about this, I'm sure if you guys keep up with anything, Call of Duty, uh, Drifter, um, and J-God, and some of those guys that do a lot of the stats in game, so they didn't see any changes in what statistics they have that they could pull up about the fire rate changes. 
Uh, that may change, of course. Maybe, you know, it was just not something available to them at the time. I have been running around a little bit with the M16 and the AUG today just, try, just to kind of try them out because a lot of people were saying they didn't get enough, you know, nerfs to them. They were still really good. And I will say I've gotten killed a lot with the AUG uh, in games today. The M16, I did use some earlier, and it I couldn't really tell a massive difference in it either. So it's going to be a little bit of more testing, I think, uh, to me, uh, for, you know, for myself personally to run around with these guns to see how they really work. But it does seem like they uh, are still pretty strong, in my opinion. Adjusted the barrel attachments that improve fire rates for tactical rifles. Also, for the M60, they increased the ADS speed and increased the weapon uh, swap speed. Uh, for some of the snipers, they re uh, recoil adjusted for the higher shot power. Of course, this is for uh, the M, I think it's the M28, what I call the 50 cal. Uh, the Tiger Team barrel will now increase the one, hot, uh, one hit kill zone and increase the damage multiplier for upper chest to allow for one, hot ki uh, one hit kills without attachments. The Magnum, they increase the effective damage range and increase the fire rate. Uh, the pump action shotgun, the Hoyer 77 or the Hillbilly shotguns, a lot of people call it online, decrease the damage ranges and decrease the damage range for the 25.2 task force barrel. And of course, the Spaz shotgun, uh, the one that everybody uses, they decrease the damage range, decrease the fire rate, and decrease the damage range for the 24.8 uh, task force barrel as well. They adjusted the barrel attachments to improve fire rates for shotguns. And they reduced the amount of player knockback when uh, being damaged by bullet weapons. That was just kind of an in general weapon fix overall. Uh, when it comes to perks, a flak jacket, they reduced explosive damage mitigation. Flak jacket was pretty strong. I'm not sure if this was enough, but I mean, I have seen and experienced. I have thrown lots of grenades at people and they take tons of damage. And I've also had a lot of grenades thrown at me where I can take, you know, damage from two or three before it would actually blow me up, which is pretty crazy. Uh, forward in, uh, Intel increased viewable mini map area, which is nuts because Forward Intel already gave you a 60% a radius expansion kind of on the mini map. Uh, and they've added even more to this. Some maps, you pretty much can see the entire map with Forward Intel almost. So I'm going to kind of be curious to see what happens with that. I'll remove protection from field mic detection. Uh, for Ninja. So now, if you're using Ninja, Phil Mox will still be able to detect you. I'm assuming is what they're going with with this. And added full immunity to Phil Mike detection for Spycraft. So they pretty much took that off Ninja and added it to Spycraft. Spycraft is definitely becoming, in my opinion, one of the more underused perks in Tier 3 that is really, really good. Uh, equipment for the frag grenades, they slightly increase the damage, slightly increase the damage on the Maltov and reduced the hill speed on the stem shot. I kind of had a feeling this was coming. Everybody uses stem a lot in game, uh, and eventually they may just nerf stem into the ground. We'll kind of have to wait and see, but there has been a lot of changes even since the alpha and the beta versions of the game. Uh, the field might no longer detects users who are crouch walking, ADS walking, or swimming. Uh, the gas mine, they increased the damage, removed detonation delay, and reduced how much a player will be shown when affected by the gas, uh, or slowed, excuse me, when affected by the gas. They added the HARP, which of course is the advanced UAV that has been added into the game, and they addressed an issue that the cruise missile HUD effect would display after a cruise missile kill cam, addressed an issue that allowed the R, uh, RCXD to push teammates. Quick play will now dis, uh, display the player's late last selected tab, on core and hardcore by default addressed an issue where the camera could not access the entire map in crossroads that were all the, those were all the changes for you know the kill streaks the weapons that kind of thing there's a lot of changes here in, with the weapons and as you guys know sometimes with these changes they say they change things and seem like it doesn't change it in game we had that issue in modern warfare we'll kind of have to wait and see like i said the aug and the m16 did not really seem to have that many changes in my opinion when i played with them We'll have to wait and see, you know, once we get a little bit more play testing. There were some changes for zombies for stability fixes, added support for two player split screen. Of course, they're going to add the MAC 10 and the Graza into the mystery box. Uh, the cruise missile was added as a new support weapon starting in season one uh, in zombies. Also, they fixed some issues with the leaderboard, uh, addressed some issues for the X field and field upgrades and equipment, and addressed a timing specific issue that caused Pack a Punch to become non functional. Also, some UI fixes and some general bug fixes for zombies as well, along with Dead Ops Arcade and, of course, Onslaught for PS4 and PS5. And when it comes to PC, as always, added various stability fixes. That is always something they say for PC and address an issue that could cause the game. 
to occasionally crash when quitting the game and updated recommended driver versions for AMD and of course Nvidia. I know a lot of the pro players are hoping that they get these issues fixed because since the pro, uh, pro scene has gone to PC, they're getting scan and repair a lot. I, I'm sure that probably people that play on PC just in general and pubs probably get this issue as well. It is kind of a pain, uh, of course, when you watch any pro practices, pro scrims right now. That is one of the biggest things they don't like. They don't. They always talk about the scan and repair. And they always talked about the headshot multiplier. It looks like some of the headshot multipliers have been fixed. I'm not sure about the scan and repairs. That's going to up, you know, be fixed with this update. We'll kind of have to wait and see. But anyway, guys, like I said, if you want to read over this in its entirety, it is down in the description. Be sure to check out everything down below in the description, the community discord, my Twitter, and of course, the affiliate here on the channel, GT Racing. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.